Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Devin, I'm with Google. Um, I'll give just a short intro and then I'll pass it over to you to give like an intro of sort of your background and some of the things um, like in your title now. So I am from Google working with our retail customers. I'm actually on the cloud space. So definitely it's been really exciting to get to talk with you guys more on some of what my counterparts in the ad side do. So that's been a great time. And then Sarah, if you wanna share some. Yes, hi everybody, I'm Sarah Sachs. I work at Coca-Cola. Um, my job right now, very long title, but I lead innovation for the nutrition business, which is the juice business primarily. I grabbed this guy because Hopefully you're all drinking these. Um, this is one of the brands in our portfolio. Yeah. So I just wanted to start off with a couple of questions around sort of innovation and in, in your sort of background of work currently with Coca-Cola. So one of those is you're currently leading innovation for the nutrition portfolio. And what are sort of some of your biggest goals that you are looking forward to this year? Yeah. So just to give a little context, the brands I manage or lead innovation for are Minute Maid, obviously, which has a very broad portfolio from chilled orange juice to basically sort of soda-like beverages, and then these, which are a little bit in between. Um, I manage innovation for Simply, which is more kind of natural and close to nature, um, High C, Honest Kids. So it's a pretty broad portfolio. Um, and obviously each of those brands within the portfolio have different objectives. I think the big thing for across the board is that during COVID, Juice Valley had an explosion. People were trying to get the benefits, the vitamins, um, and, we're see and they were at home for breakfast. So particularly orange juice saw a huge increase. We're seeing that decline a little bit now. So how do we stay, kind of keep the momentum, stay in the game with people, especially for their mornings, um, but then also expand the routine beyond that morning time. Um, across the board, also really looking to reduce sugar content. That is a number one driver in why people either don't drink juice or move away from juice. Um, for Minute Maid, I don't know how familiar all of you are with that brand, but it's it's a very old brand with heritage and a lot of heart, but it's lost a little bit of relevance. So how do we make it relevant again, bring it back to kind of the, its iconic status in the US? Um, so we've got kind of a broad range of goals across the portfolio. Right. And then with sort of your entire portfolio, what innovations are you currently working on and, and why is it are the ones that you guys are working on currently so important to you guys? Yeah, so I think we have a video maybe of at least one of the innovations that I'm leading and then I'll answer the question, but I want to show the video. At Simply, we think a good drink doesn't have to be complicated or have alcohol. Fancy a mocktail? New Simply Mixology is a mocktail. Favor a cocktail? Just make it one. No, I can't. There's no alcohol in it. You have to add it if you want it. So this is Simply Mixology. I mentioned that, you know, we're really trying to keep the momentum on orange juice, but then also expand occasions for consumers. Um, and so this uh, Simply Beverage, which is either a mocktail or a mixer, um, dual proposition, uh, really helps us kind of ease into that evening occasion and also really jumps on onto trends around um, alcohol consumption. So lots of consumers are starting to take this sober curious approach where they're either cutting back on alcohol or eliminating it altogether for health reasons. Um, and it also is lower sugar content than some of our existing Simply Beverages. So kind of hitting on all of the things that you asked about in the beginning. Um, the other beverage that we've launched this year, um, so I can talk about it, is I don't know if you all have seen Minute Maid Aguas Frescas. Um, so if you know what an Aguas Frescas is, it's uh, basically like a juicy water or watery juice. Um, it is traditional in Hispanic culture. And so we've launched uh, both cans and then a chilled version of Aguas Frescas to, again, really connect with a younger generation, be more modern. Um, a lot of our consumers are Hispanic, so kind of connecting with the people who drink our products. So really excited about those. Yeah, no, as we sort of talked about this video before and I was like, oh, what an exciting product for, you know, the sober curious mindset and then also just, you know, continuing to expand that brand. Yeah. Um, and then so let's go into some sort of challenges and sort of thought provoking issues that you guys have been dealing with on your side of things. So what have been some of the biggest challenges regarding innovation that you've dealt with, you know, recently in the past year, maybe a little bit further back even? Yeah, I would say, and and I hadn't been on the juice business before this role. The biggest challenge I've had this year is supply chain. 
um, whether it's crops in or in Florida being destroyed by storms because of climate change, whether it's labor, I think somebody on a previous panel mentioned uh, around IHG, um, labor at our plants, inability to get cheap plastic. It goes on and on and on, and it's really um, frustrated our customers like Walmart, Publix, and Kroger, and then they don't want to take innovation when you can't even supply the base. So that's been the biggest, but I would say also for those who work at larger companies, um, Coke is not always the most nimble, kind of, you know, some of what the folks before were saying, we're not always the most nimble. It takes a long time to innovate, and so pushing the organization to move faster, to respond to trends. Um, to get on board with risk, that has also been a challenge. Right. And then sort of with that innovation and, and the, I know that we talked recently and you you talked about this with me as well, is um, sort of those spontaneous events and staying on top of that. What are some strategies that you guys use to keep up with those events that are sort of not as expected? Yeah, I'll say, you know, being honest in terms of innovation in the juice part of the business, we can't respond very quickly. I'm just trying to get innovation out before the trend goes away mm -hmm. uh, versus responding in real time. I think on the um, on the carbonated soft drink side of the business, we can be more nimble. The development process is faster. So that's why I asked the question about Oreo, that the Coke brand is jumping on trends and artists and co-creating, which I think is really exciting and cool. Um, we do, you know, I think through messaging more so than product innovation is where we can yeah. lean into current events and be relevant. Yeah. And then just as far as innovation as a career path and, you know, goals inside of that, what do you think it takes to really set yourself apart and be successful in a career in the innovation space? Yeah, I think so. Not too long ago, I attended an innovation conference and kind of chatted with other people who like me, kind of embrace innovation. I think there's a big difference between kind of being a marketer who manages a brand and then leading innovation. Um, I think to lead innovation, you have to be okay not knowing what the end destination is, knowing what you want to achieve, but not 100% knowing all the steps to get there. You have to be really agile and willing to change um, as you learn. So for example, with Mixology, we originally had briefed our technical team to create three beverages that are not the three that we're launching because when they got into the lab, they couldn't make it work. Um, one of them was a Bellini idea and we can't add bubbles to that package. Um, so really being flexible while still keeping the vision of where you wanna go. Um, and I think the last thing is kind of having a thick skin because a lot of times the things that I've worked on in terms of innovation, don't launch, don't succeed, get killed because of internal politics. So just really being sort of able to take the disappointment, I guess, of not um, not seeing your ideas come to life. Right, right. And then just in terms of innovation on a like larger scale, what innovations inspire you and, and sort of, you know, have stuck out to you recently? Yeah, I'm really impressed when brands or companies can come in and really change the game in their industry. So I'm really obsessed with Liquid Death, even though yeah. that's a competitor. Um, they've sort of upended the water business. They've taken kind of boring water in a, in a plastic bottle, and no offense to Prince from yesterday, but um, and made it like edgy and cool, and it's in a can. And I mean, it's really it almost looks like alcohol. Yes. Yeah, and now they're um, kind of expanding into tea, and they also do a really great job kind of executionally in store and in other places. Um, I've always thought Casper was a great success story for the same reason. Um, they took the mattress buying process and turned it on its head. So that, that's where I get really inspired, where um, companies can really change the way consumers think about an industry. Right, right. And then did we want to chat about digital as well? Uh, yes. In, in the space that we're in, you know. I would love you to chat about digital because we wanted to uh, let Devin have some time to talk too because I'm sure you're all interested in Google and she. I'm definitely not an expert in this space. So I want to ask you, um, how are you seeing brands really stand out and differentiate in the digital space? Maybe any innovation you've seen right. as well? Yeah, so definitely as, you know, a part of Google, there's always innovation that we're chatting about working on and trying to, you know, iterate and things like that. And I know yesterday we, we something that stuck out to me as sort of uh, an issue that a lot of, you know, customers are having is 
the lady from European Wax Center was talking about data and how they had to go through like all of these processes to get access to their data and and how that can just be such a gap in your actual ability to you know act on that. And so at Google, we talk a lot about um, getting accurate data that you can action on. So getting those insights as quickly as possible, I think, you know, getting from insight to actionable, you know, results, and then, you know, taking all of those insights and looking at the outcome is definitely something that Google really tries to help out their customers with and, and, you know, work towards that, you know, quickness with. So I think um, that's definitely a common issue that we see a bunch. So maybe do we want to open up any conversation for Coca-Cola and especially the juice side of things, um, an interesting conversation as well. Yeah, good question. Yeah, those are, those are interesting. Um, actually, uh, on the back to the what's the gem uh, conversation, um, because yeah, you do see that brand sort of up and big from a marketing perspective more than anything. And so when you do let go, when you see a brand like that doing things, do you take cues in that way, and then you begin to innovate based on what you see, or how do you think about that as as you look at? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think it depends. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example from the juice category. So sparkling ice many years ago was very similar. It kind of came into the market. It was very different. It, it's sort of juice-ish, water-ish. And the way we're structured at Coke is it, you know, there's a juice business, there's a water business, they're separate. We did try to fight it. Um, and we had a Minute Maid product that had real juice in it. And we were trying to bring forward health credentials. It didn't succeed. When I came into this role, that is a, a white space for us still, an opportunity, but it didn't, for me, I didn't want to go after it. I didn't want to take the cues because number one, we've already tried it and failed. But number two, I think we have an opportunity to be a leader in other spaces. Um, but I think it depends. I mean, there, Spindrift is another one we don't really have a fighter for. You may see a fighter at some point um, in the future from one of our brands. So I do think it depends. Just to, sorry to take in, uh, just a follow-up question. That, um, when you do test in the market with products, uh -huh. what, what, uh, yeah, what signals do you get to say, like, this thing is going to be successful or it's not? How yeah. does it work? So we have fairly standardized testing methodologies with partners like Nielsen, where you know they have a huge database of innovation testing, and we know that if it scores in this way, it's likely to succeed. If it scores in this way, not so much. I think when you launch, you know, achieving that success depends a lot on how you actually launch and do you implement the plans that you say you're going to. Um, but that's the biggest thing. Very infrequently do we actually test in market, like in a store, before we launch or before we go full national. Um, but depending on the situation, we may do that too. And then see how consumers really um, purchase in real life um, to then show us if we should move forward. Does that answer the question? Okay. Yeah. You want to? So my um, husband tracked down some flavor margarita. I think it's a margarita mix that you guys make. He was having a really hard time finding it, so we had to like go to a different zip code. And it was, it's that good, so uh, I guess. I'll take it. Uh, Hopefully, it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, so you talked about like you know tapping into the sober curious. I'm definitely not sober, but um, with what you're doing, like I know you said, pivoting to trends is very difficult. Obviously, there's a longevity there to that that product line. Um, as you continue to expand, like. Are you engaging with your consumer base from like a social perspective? Are you like, are you partnering on the digital side to kind of drive some of that innovation? Like, where did you get kind of the input to say, hey, this is probably a good idea? Yeah, I would say from an inno purely innovation perspective, the inputs are coming more from kind of looking at macro trends, looking at our portfolio and the what the brands are trying to achieve because. You know, I, I definitely believe that innovation is not a strategy in and of itself. It should be a tool to support the brand strategy. So, you know, how do we achieve our brand strategies? What are the macro trends? Where are our white spaces? Um, how can we achieve our goals? We definitely talk to consumers. So my process in, in my role now has been, you know, look at all of that information, brainstorm, create concepts, cross-functionally, bring in partners, et cetera. 
and then test the ideas. So it's really through idea testing that we then narrow down and see how successful we think they'll be. Hey, Sarah, question hey. Um, about innovation in other markets. Are you thinking of any other markets that are more see more of the trend starting there outside of the US? Yeah, that's a good question. So two years ago when I actually got this role, one of the reason one of the enablers of me taking this role is that Coke did a restructure. And one of the purposes of that restructure was to create more of a global network. Um, so now in this role, I've been collaborating with partners who do innovation on nutrition across the whole world. So Asia and Europe and wherever else. So we do share ideas. Um, it is very interesting though, how different the markets are and how culturally different they are, um, particularly when it comes to juice. I do think that we see Aguas Frescas is a great example. We are trying to bring in trends from other cultures and other countries. So, you know, that happened to come from Mexico, but there are others from Asia that we're looking at. So absolutely keeping an eye on our own internal products and our innovation pipeline, but then external as well. Anything else? Great.